Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, so continuing with our severe plastic deformation module, okay. today I am going to cover another very important uh, technique in severe plastic deformation. Again it is based on the shear deformation in the material and that is called friction stir processing. Okay. So, as is true for any other uh, processing method also, okay. just wanted to show you uh, this particular kind of triangle where the processing Okay, you can take any processing method here, not only friction stirred processing is connected with the microstructural change as we saw in ECAP or in other processing methods also. So, there will be a change in the microstructure, you can use certain techniques to uh, characterize the microstructure okay. and uh, the property which you are going to check is usually mechanical property because we are looking upon, upon structural materials. Okay. So, that will be there. So, processing then microstructure property that will be again give a feedback that okay, uh, we have not achieved the property which was, which was required. So, you can look at the processing or you can look at the microstructure okay, and try to change the processing condition and so on. Okay. So, this kind of uh, uh, interrelationship between processing microstructure and property keeps taking place okay so looking at the friction stir processing technique okay again a very simple technique okay you can use uh, if if you have a milling machine in your uh, lab or your your uh, department okay you can use it very easily okay basically it is, you need a vertical milling machine okay so, what, what it has is that you have a tool okay, which contains a shoulder okay, and a pin. Okay. The shoulder is just touching the surface of the workpiece okay, with, with certain normal force, okay. there is a downward force and the pin is actually inside the material okay. and this tool is now rotating at a good RPM. Okay. So, what will happen that this shoulder will rub against the surface of the workpiece and will generate the heat okay, through friction okay. and this heat will be of course, will dissipate around okay. and when you go to higher temperature we have already seen that the flow stress of the material keeps coming down. So, basically materials become soft. Okay. So, then this rotating pin what it does is it, 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 it stirs the material around, around it. Okay. So, this soft material will be continuously stirred around the pin okay. and now suppose you have started moving this, this particular uh, tool okay, at a certain traverse speed. Okay. Then what will happen the material from the front will be taken back where the cavity is created because of the movement. So, when the tool is moving what will happen it will of course, create a cavity behind it. So, this rotation will take the material from the front okay, and will deposit at the back. Okay. Of course, this material flow is a very complex phenomena, okay. a lot of work is going on in understanding the material flow. So, but in, in kind of a layman's language it is like this that you are continuously bringing front material in the back and the tool is moving and because of this when the material is st getting stirred around the pin. Okay, you impose lot of strain okay, and the strain rate is uh, of course, related to the RPM. Okay. So, at very high strain rate and of course, there is a temperature involved. So, it is a very typical self generated thermomechanical processing. So, in this case you are not heating material from outside, the heating is also in situ through the through the movement of the tool okay. and uh, the the deformation is being carried out by this stirring process. Okay, so very very elegant technique in that sense. 
uh, actually this whole process is started with the friction stir welding technique ok, where you actually take two plates ok and you can join by doing this. So, there is a material movement from one side to another side ok. So, this material movement from one side to another side will ultimately join two, um, two plates for example. So, this is actually is, uh, was proposed for a, as a welding technique initially and actually a lot of work is there on friction stir welding also. Uh, later on uh, by Mishra uh, and, and co-workers they uh, used this welding technique for processing. So, instead of having two plates joining plates if you have one sim single plate ok and in that you are doing moving this tool like this ok what will happen it will change the microstructure ok. So, usually it will refine the microstructure because of you are imposing very high strain at a very high strain rate at a higher temperature ok. And uh, typically if you, if you see the, the this particular plane ok then you will see a microstructural uh, region like this. So, this is what we call as a stir zone where the pin is stirring the material ok. Next to it is called a thermomechanically affected zone that means, uh, the strain is not that in that much to refine the microstructure. So, you here you can see elongated grains ok, which are partially uh, kind of recrystallized or uh, partially recovered ok. So, recovery is not complete or recrystallization is not complete. Whereas, in the stir zone it will be very nice recrystallized microstructure can be observed ok. So, next to the stir zone you have thermomechanically affected zone, next to that is because heat is there. So, it has it will dissipate. So, you will have a heat affected zone and then the base material ok. So, these are the different uh, uh, zone microstructural zone you will observe in the uh, in, in the uh, friction stir processing. Okay. So, this is a one micrograph for that, you have nugget zone, okay. you can see of course, because it is taken at a, at a it is a macro structure, okay. you cannot see very fine grain um, inside. Okay. So, you have a nugget zone or a stir zone also, it is also called as a stir zone or nugget zone, then you have thermomechanically affected zone and then the heat affected zone. Then there are two sides shown here, one is called retreating and another is called advancing ok. So, let us see what is advancing and what is retreating ok. So, in this case for example, in this schematic you can see the tool is rotating like this ok, there is a rotation like this and the tool is also moving in this direction ok. So, when you have this kind of uh, condition you will obviously have two different set of uh, material flow on this side uh, of the tool ok, if you I take this as center line, my rotation direction and my traverse direction both are in the same direction ok. So, that side I will call as this part of the side I will call as advancing side ok. On the other side my tool rotation is in this direction and my of course, traverse speed will still remain in the same direction. So, these are in now opposite direction the tool rotation and the uh, and the traverse speed. So, this part of the process zone I will call as retreating side. So, there is one called advancing side and another what we call as retreating side ok and uh, another very nice schematic is shown here for different microstructural zones ok. Now, function of the tool uh, already we have discussed ok. So, it serves primarily two functions heating ok and deformation. So, heating is primarily through shoulder ok and work piece uh, friction between shoulder and work piece ok and deformation is primarily shoulder also contribute to some part of the deformation, but primarily is it is through the rotating pin ok. So, heat is generated due to friction of the rotating shoulder with the surface of the work piece ok and the rotating pin stirs the heated material around the rotating pin and fills the cavity at the rear of the tool and the material that flows around the tool is subjected to severe plastic deformation and thermal exposure which leads to significant refinement of microstructure in the process zone 
Okay, so already we I have told you about this. Okay, that all this stirring and uh, uh, at high temperature will uh, refine the microstructure. Okay, now what are the process parameters which is going to affect your uh, uh, microstructure? Okay, and obviously the properties also. So, there are you can categorize them in uh, three variables here, one is machine variable okay, which you can change on the machine, then you can have uh, variable in tool design and of course, material properties. Okay. So, material property of course, once your material phase you cannot do anything. In machine variable these two parameters are the most important parameters, okay. tool rotation. Okay. So, as RPM is increasing there will be more frictional heating okay, because uh, friction will be more between the, when the between the shoulder and the surface of the workpiece. So, rotational high rotational speed okay, will obviously affect the temperature. So, temperature attained will be higher of course, there is a self limit here you cannot have a monotonic. Uh, uh, increase in the temperature. Okay. Uh, after some time what will happen? The temperature will be so high that the material close to the pin surface will be in molten condition and there is no transfer of power from the tool to the material. Okay. So, if, if it localized heating takes place you cannot have a addition of heat to the material. Okay. So, it is a self limiting process. So, you cannot keep increasing temperature uh, continuously, but in general if you increase the RPM temperature attained will be more and also because the stirring is more okay, the strain rate which you achieve will also be going to be more as you increase the rotation speed. True travel is, uh, speed if you have a slower speed okay, the temperature attained will be more. Okay when you have a very high speed okay your your tool is not uh, giving enough time at a particular location so the the rpm which is generating the heat is doesn't get enough time to to raise the temperature so the temperature attained will be uh, lower uh, uh, will be higher if you have a low speed and if you have a high traverse speed the temperature attained will be lower okay so these two are very important parameters Tool tilt angle and plunge depth will of course, affect uh, we will have a important bearing on the defects in this process. Okay. So, by, by uh, uh, manipulation of these two parameters people have uh, uh, people were able to uh, achieve defect free processing in the material. Shoulder uh, in, in tool design okay, shoulder of course, shoulder and uh, the pin uh, diameter and their, uh, their their profile is going to affect the heat generation. So, when you have a higher shoulder diameter okay, of course, you will have more heat generation. Okay. Uh, similarly, when you have a bigger pin diameter you will have higher uh, peripheral velocity. So, it will affect your strain rate. Okay. So, tool design also is very important. Uh, so, dimension as well as profile. Okay. Now, let us say the temperature which you achieve usually in this kind of uh, processes. Okay. So, a nice uh, uh, profile is given for the temperature. So, this is your FSW nugget zone okay, where the nugget is there and of course, uh, I cannot measure the temperature in the stir zone because if I put a thermocouple there due to stirring it will be destroyed. Okay. So, either I can uh, uh, I can predict the temperature through some modeling processes that what is the actual temperature of the stir zone. Okay. Through experimental process I can only find out the temperature in the in the in the vicinity of the nugget zone. Okay. I cannot find out exactly in the uh, in the nugget. Okay. In the nugget you can only do some modeling exercise and find out the temperature. Okay. So, this is your top surface okay. and this is your uh, uh, distance from edge of FSW nugget is on the x axis here okay. and this is distance below the top surface. Okay. So, you, this whole temperature profile is shown here. So, as you go towards the FS, 
the nugget or the stir zone, the temperature is more. So, this is for aluminum alloy. Okay, so, the temperature attained is around 400 to 500 degrees Celsius, around 473 and so on. So, temperature you can say it is around 0.7 uh, uh, of melting point, okay, 0.7 Tm of aluminum. So, in FSW, FSP, the temperature attains are uh, around that, okay. Dep of course, it will also depend on the RPM. Okay. And as you go away from the nugget zone as well as if you come down from the top surface, the temperature uh, is continuously changing. So, uh, here the important thing is to understand that the temperature is going to be continuously changing as a function of uh, distance from the top surface. So, how much distance you are away from the shoulder uh, in the downward direction and as well as how much distance you are away from the stir zone. Okay, both of these are going to affect uh, your temperature profile. In the next graph, you can see the effect of distance from the weld center is on the x axis on the peak temperature which is attained okay, and at 3 different RPMs. Okay. So, from 300 RPM to 1000 RPM. So, in 300 RPM okay, which is shown by this uh, uh, circles. Okay, uh, the temperature attained is around 425 degrees Celsius okay. and as you you are going away from the center line. Okay. So, in the nugget zone it is around 425 and at a distance of let us say 10 mm uh, the temperature is around um, 340 or 330 uh, uh, degrees Celsius. Okay. So, almost 100 degrees Celsius difference is there. But if I increase the RPM okay, from 300 RPM to 1000 RPM, the temperature attained here now is around 475 degrees Celsius. So, almost a, a, a change of 50 degrees Celsius by changing the RPM. Okay. And of course, if your peak temperatures are more, the other uh, peak temperatures at other location also going to be more. Okay. So, RPM has a direct effect on the uh, temperature you can achieve during the friction stir processing or welding technique. Okay. What is the effect of strain on strain and strain rate? Okay. So, this is of course, a compu computational work uh, using some com computational analysis. Okay. So, strain rate if you see here, the strain rate achieved is around 10 per second. Okay. Uh, in these are the two conditions, uh, I am not sure about the conditions right now, the, but the rotation speed was taken as 300 rpm and the traverse speed was uh, 2.1 mm per second. So, the to just get, a, get an idea of about the strain rate, the strain rate achieved is around 10 per second okay. and the strain achieved is around uh, 3 okay, in, in, the, in the stir zone. There is another uh, uh, from another paper okay, uh, we, where we have actually found out the strain rate reported by different people uh, using microstructural analysis and computational work. Okay. The strain rate uh, you can see there is a wide variation in the strain rate uh, reported in the literature. Okay. So, if you see the rotation speed is shown on the x axis. Okay. So, as, as you are increasing the RPM, of course, the strain rate is increasing. So, that is clear in all the all the work that when you increase the strain rate, uh, when you increase the RPM or rotation speed, your uh, strain rate is going to increase. Okay. But which technique you use, mostly the strain rate uh, calculation depends on that. Okay. But again to just g g get a flavor of a strain rate, the strain rate reported is, uh, is in a wide range. Okay. Uh, I would say maybe let us say from 5 to um, let us say 120 per second okay, depending upon the, uh, on the, uh, the method which is used to measure the strain rate or to predict the strain rate in the computational case. So, one thing is clear. Okay, the temperature uh, attained is around more than 0.5 Tm. The strain rate uh, attained is uh, at least more than 1 per second. Okay. Uh, it can go up to 100 per second also. 
the 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 strain which you are achieving is also in 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 the range of 5 to 10 for example okay so strain strain rate achieved and the temperature all this contribute to the dynamic recrystallization in this materials okay and if you remember in continuous dynamic recrystallization we said that uh, in a low staking fault energy material also uh, uh, you can achieve a continuous dynamic recrystallization if the amount of strain is sufficiently high so in these uh, processes uh, spd processes the because you are able to put lot of strain in the material the the refinement and the, the, the microstructure which you get has a very high fraction of high angle grain boundary and uh, consider with considerable refinement in the microstructure. And this is what uh, uh, you can see the effect on the microstructure. Okay. So, this is uh, another work taken from uh, one paper uh, of ours. Okay, so, you have a, this is a f f aluminum 5083 uh, 86 alloy, this is the initial grain size okay, which is in annealed condition, grain size is around 50 micron. Okay. So, two set of uh, processing conditions are used 1025 rpm at 50 mm per minute and 720 rpm at 155 mm per minute. What will be the effect on the zener Honoman parameter is also shown here. Okay. So, from at high rpm uh, i am able to uh, and lower speed i am having lower z and at lower rpm high traverse speed i have higher z so as z is increasing i should have finer grain size material so you can see here from 12.6 to 7.4 uh, grain size I am able to achieve from 50 micron. Okay. So, just by changing the rpm and traverse speed you can do a very nice control on the uh, on the microstructures or the grain size. Okay. This is the effect of the starting material. So, this in, instead of if you take from annual material if we would have taken a, a rolled material. So, this is a rolled material and rolling was done up to 50 percent reduction. Okay. So, already some amount of co cold rolling was done, some, some amount of dislocations were already introduced in the material okay. and when if you do a processing of this material at the same condition which we did for the annealed material, okay, the grain size refinement is even better. Okay. So, now uh, what we could achieve 12.6 in the annealed material that got reduced to 6.9 micron in case of rolled starting material okay and similarly 5.7 for uh, higher uh, uh, higher z parameter okay so this is the effect of both the rpm and the traverse speed on the microstructure okay and as we, i told you that when you increase the rpm actually the temperature attained will be more so you can see the effect of that on the grain size the grain size achieved in case of higher temperature deformation is more Okay, whereas, in a lower temperature uh, the grain size is fine. Okay. Now, uh, another advantage of FSP is that you can do by doing multiple passes I can extend the, the amount of uh, or the, the area of deformation. Okay. So, in one pass I can only affect maybe the area of around pin size okay. if my pin size is around let us say 6 mm. Okay, so, the area affected will be around in that range only 6 mm or so, okay. but if I want to have uh, a larger uh, volume or larger area to be processed, what I can do is I can do multiple passes. Okay. So, one pass is uh, second pass is kind of an overlapping on the first pass. Okay. So, you can see this, this is the was supposed to be first pass and then there is a second pass. Uh, overlapped on that and then there is a third pass and so on. So, by doing this multiple passes I am able to do uh, a processing of a um, volume. Okay. So, I can easily extend the, the FSP as a bulk processing technique, okay. but the, the important thing is to understand that what will be the effect on the microstructure because you are continuously deforming, continuously exposing your material to high temperature. Okay, so, what will be the effect of let us say second pass on the first pass or third pass on the first pass and so on. Okay, so, 
microstructure is taken from three locations okay where the first pass was there then the second one and the third one okay and you can see that from the microstructure we don't see much difference in the microstructure okay the microstructure is more or less uniform whether you are in first pass second pass or third pass okay so that is a very outcome of this uh, processing that the microstructure is not getting affected too much by multiple passes so you can easily extend the friction stir processing as the bulk processing technique okay so basically uh, this is uh, this is a macro structure of the same uh, multi pass technique okay and in this work uh, the overlapping was done by 50% on the uh, retreating side okay you can do overlapping on the advancing side as well as on retreating side okay so you can see uh, 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 that a very big sheet is uh, kind of processed okay and if you see in a smaller sheet the effect of individual passes can be seen on the microstructure okay and you you can see that uh, a bigger cross sectional or volume is processed using the bulk processing technique here okay so you can easily extend the fsp technique as a bulk processing technique by doing multiple passes now what is the effect of uh, this uh, uh, processing on the microstructure so as we have seen that uh, the the material will be affected only equal to the pin length okay so suppose this is my sheet this is the thickness of the sheet in which uh, this is your pin okay and this is my shoulder okay and which is rotating so you can see that only uh, if i see th the microstructure of this maybe the microstructure will show some basin like this so only this part of the microstructure will be affected the rest of the microstructure in the thickness direction will not be affected that much okay so that is what we uh, uh, that that is what is uh, characterized here okay so where the nugget or uh, up to the pin length okay so, so these are very long uh, scans okay you can see that it is the scale is 100 micron so in in this direction it must be the 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 the, th the thickness uh, must be around uh, 700 800 uh, micron or so so up to maybe 1 uh, 1 mm length okay so if you see the where up to where the pin is going okay the, the 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 grain size is refined okay and uh, also we have discussed about the grain orientation spread map so i told you that wherever you have recrystallization the the geo grain orientation spread value will be low okay so this light green is the gos value is up to 1 okay so that is what is defined as the recrystallized grain okay so you can see here that as uh, Uh, the recrystallization is happening the gos values are lower there okay so all this light green and uh, at few places dark green also is there but if you see this is where we say that you have a thermomechanically affected zone okay that means the material is not fully recrystallized or fully recovered okay that means dislocation must be there low angle grain boundaries must be there so there you can see that the grain orientation spread is much higher and here also i can see coarse grains here okay and the grain orientation spread value is much higher more than 2.2 here so this is my area which is uh, i would say is a thermomechanically affected zone and beyond that it it is either heat affected zone or the base material okay so very nicely uh, you can see that uh, that how how the different microstructural regions will be there in the material because of the processing so if you want to have process for the whole sheet of course uh, i will extend the pin okay of course there is a limit to that also but uh, for example 5 mm 6 mm plate you can easily do a friction stir processing using a pin of 5 mm or 6 mm okay now what is the effect of this on the mic um, the on the mechanical property for example hardness okay so if you see the, there are in this schematic there are three conditions are shown okay for aluminum alloy basically you have annealed condition okay and uh, 
in aluminum alloy there are two different set of uh, alloys one which are precipitation hardened and another which are non precipitation hardenable okay so in those material you can have work hardening okay so in precipitation hardenable material if you see the 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 hardness profile the profile will be something like this in the nugget zone actually the hardness comes down in the base material the hardness is more so in that sense you can say that the actually me mechanical properties are uh, reducing in the process zone you are refining the grain size but in the material which is precipitation hardened because the precipitate are being exposed to high temperatures okay what will happen these precipitate either will dissolve in the material or there will be coarsening of the precipitate both these things actually uh, bring down the uh, hardness or the strength of the material okay there will be contribution from the grain size refinement but it will not be able to compensate the reduction in the hardness or the strength because of the reduction in or dissolution or coarsening of the precipitates so in the precipitation hardened materials okay these are precipitation hardened materials okay the reduction in hardness is uh, quite significant uh, because of the processing in work hardened materials okay which doesn't get hardened by precipitation so only method to increase the strength or give a hardening to the material is through uh, introduction of dislocation through cold deformation or cold working so you increase the number of dislocation or dislocation density that will add uh, the uh, give the hardness so this is what we call as work hardening so if you have work hardening hardened material okay there also the strength uh, or hardness of the material will come down in the process zone because of the recovery and recrystallization of or removal of this dislocation through recovery recrystallization processes okay so again hardness is coming down if you take a well annealed material okay which doesn't have precipitate doesn't have uh, uh, dislocations only in this case maybe you will be able to see slight increase in the hardness due to grain refinement okay so there are three classes of material okay and uh, the actual uh, uh, results are shown here uh, in the graphs so in in the annealed one 5083 fully annealed condition you can see the hardness is more or less same and maybe there is a slight increase in the hardness in the process zone for a work hardened material 5083 which is uh, cold worked before doing processing first one was only the annealed one so in a, for the annealed one if you have done some uh, hardening work hardening in that you can see a large reduction in the hardness because of the removal of dislocation through recovery and recrystallization processes okay this is a 7075 uh, a very hard a very high strength aluminum alloy okay containing magnesium and zinc Uh, 7000 series uh, alloys okay here you can see a very large reduction in the hardness because of the precipitate dissolution or precipitate uh, coarsening okay whereas if you if you do a simple natural aging also the the hardness will start increasing obviously because the precipitates will uh, start nucleating and um, there will be increase in the hardness because of the uh, aging process okay so this is the effect on the hardness of the material due to friction stir processing now there is another very important uh, application of friction stir processing that you can produce uh, surface composites okay so basically uh, by some method like drilling hole and putting silicon carbide in the hole or al alumina or whatever ceramic you are interested in okay you put that and do the stirring process so all these silicon carbide particle will be distributed throughout the matrix okay and that will give you a hard surface and maybe a a, a, a ductile or tough uh, inner inner material okay so for example this is a a356 alloy is a silicon uh, aluminum alloy in which silicon carbide particles are introduced on the surface okay so uh, this 50 micron is the scale so this is the, this may be around let's say 70 micron thickness of the layer of the material you have introduced a silicon carbide particle 
The another graph is uh, for 5083 aluminum alloy, okay, where again around maybe let us say 100 micron thickness you, they have introduced the silicon carbide particles. Okay. So, this is a very good technique to make surface composites uh, by only embedding the ceramic particle on the surface to give uh, the surface hardness which will result in the wear resistance. So, if the material is going to be used in some condition where wear resistance is required, so the surface will get hard. So, it will provide you the required wear resistance whereas, the core will give you the sufficient structural strength. For different sets of uh, uh, th this compares uh, from a uh, uh, review paper, uh, different set of uh, materials uh, combination of uh, uh, material, the matrix material and the compo the, the ceramic particle okay, that what kind of uh, strength you will be able to achieve. Okay. So, the black one is showing the base material and the red one is showing you the surface composite. Okay. So, there is a very good increase in the strength of the material okay, when you introduce the uh, surface uh, or when you make a surface composite okay. and there are different set of materials. So, AZ91 is a magnesium alloy in which alumina and silicon carbide is added okay, in aluminum, titanium carbide or in copper, silicon carbide. There you have see you can see the reduction in the in the strength. Okay, uh, uh, we have to see the exact uh, reason for that. But in general, you can see the effect is that the strength increases as you are adding some uh, or you, when you are making some surface composites. Okay, now what will be the defects uh, which can you can encounter during the processing? Okay, uh, so few defects are shown here. Okay. Uh, and people have kind of now uh, uh, worked out that how we can remove these defects. Okay. So, one defect which is called void okay, which can be uh, can occur in the advancing side okay, on the just below the shoulder. Okay. So, this is be usually because of inadequate uh, you are not able to apply sufficient normal force okay to, to to the tool okay so when you apply normal force what the tool is doing the shoulder is actually creating a compression on the sample okay so when the material is stirring it is stirring in this confined space between the shoulder and the cold uh, uh, environment of the workpiece okay so if it is a ined inadequate uh, uh, pressure Okay, the normal force or high travel speed or slow ro tool rotation. So, all this contributes to this kind of defect. Okay. High travel speed means uh, and low rotation speed means you are not heating the material. So, softening of the material is not sufficient. Okay. Sometime you can have this kind of tunnel. So, it, this tunnel will go throughout the processed region okay, from start to finish. There will be a tunnel, there will be a kind of a channel. Okay. And that is also due, due to insufficient heating and insufficient uh, normal force. Okay. So, when you increase the RPM or if you increase the normal force, you will be able to uh, remove these kind of defects. Okay. And some defects can come on the surface. Okay. You can see a, a long uh, cavity uh, is there just below the shoulder. Okay. So, these kind of defects are there, but more or less uh, with the uh, su sufficient amount of work people have found out that how we can remove these defects. So, th th these defects can be easily uh, worked out and you can remove that. Okay. So, with that we have covered uh, a very important technique nowadays which is called friction ester processing to refine the microstructure, what will be the effect on the mechanical properties. Okay. You can do some uh, other uh, things like surface composites and all that. Okay, that also adds to the strength of the material. Okay, and uh, so few defects which can occur. People have worked out that and uh, are now no more uh, problems now. Okay, you can easily take care of these defects. Uh, one of more case study I will take on friction stress processing in the last lecture of SPD in this particular module. Okay. So, that will clarify more uh, or bring more ideas uh, 
uh, to the frictionless start processing. Okay. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you.